The Rugby Report is sponsored by Betfred. The games continue to come thick and fast, a lot like Cheslin Colby, but maybe not actually that fast. With the Aussies looking to bounce back against Uruguay, Japan in with a chance of back-to-back wins. They face a hapless Samoa side. Best of luck to you, Namibia, against the rampant All Blacks, France v Tonga, and of course, England against Argentina. Check out Betfred.com or the Betfred app for markets on try scorers, handicaps, and also look out for our racing post data on all the games in Japan. Whenever you bet, bet Fred. 18s and over, be gambleaware.org. Full T's and C's apply. See betfred.com for more information. When the fun stops, stop. The Rugby Report, Japan 2019 with Bet Fred. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome once again to the Rugby Report Japan 2019 with Betfred. Um, I'm a slightly hungover Nick Heath in Kumagaya. And I'm a very, very sober Tom May in Shinjuku in Tokyo. Very, very nice too. I was there not too long ago before I got my train down this way. Um, Shinjuku is definitely one of those... um, sort of Japanese places um, I have to thank Will Keller Will Keller of the Daily Mail for this um, that sounds superb like many Japanese places do with a bit of a tune accent um, it's, uh, he was sh- exactly um, and the rest of them like a lot of players like, Fukuoka is oh, fantastic that, yeah Sapporo uh, and uh, <laughs> and what I really As like ku- Kumamoto um, <laughs> I mean, basically everywhere in Japan sounds brilliant. Um, the the Hakatanamori Stadium. Um, it's it's, it's <laughs> to be just fair, a lot to... It's that's just a big box tick for the Geordie language, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. What's not to love? Um, mm. Yeah, ab- absolutely anyway, gorgeous. Just have my um, f- my so first sip of Asahi. Let's come clean. Uh-huh. I mean, you're not just slightly hungover, are you? You're reeking. Uh, yeah, it was a slightly slightly dusty one, uh, three in the morning. Um, yeah, but, no, uh, don't lie, because you were last on when I got up this morning and I, and I checked my <laughs> WhatsApp. Last online, four thirty. Was I? Yeah. Well, that's news to me. Mm. Well, excellent. Um, yeah. but, well, now uh, we, now yeah. it's out in the open. Don't worry about it. Like, we Thanks, just, mate. We all want to be honest on this thing. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, I appreciate that entirely. Is it bedtime yet? Um, we are going to have a little look back at the games that have taken place over the last few days and a look ahead to those ones taking place this big weekend. Um, so we sort of r- ran the rule over Scotland Samoa, Tom, but uh, but you managed to catch up with Rory Lawson, former Scotland scrum half, um, and uh, it was worth uh, I think it's worth hearing what he had to say about the sort of growing confidence of the Scots, perhaps, and what he's making of Japan so far. I'm still with the mighty Roy Lawson, the only man that's smaller than me in world rugby. Uh, smile on your face after last night. Smile on my face after catching your buffalo wing from a, <laughs> from, a, from a taxi as you, as you were showing. That was showing incredible. Stories. It, was, it was incredible. <laughs> I, eagle-eyed. I saw a man who was the same height as Japanese, but three, t- <laughs> three times the width and silver, silver back. So um, I called it from the cab um, and then you continued to buffalo. Uh, yeah, no... <laughs> I am I am delighted with Scotland's bounce back performance. Um, I think the it was professional. They executed well. They were clinical. They got the job done. It was a little bit more squeaky bum than I would have liked, given um, you know there was what six seven minutes to go when they actually got the the penalty try that led to the bonus point. But I felt that the the decision makers stood up. The game plan was right. The chain the guys who came in, Blade Thompson, Bradbury, Ritchie in the back row. Um, did a great job and it was comfortable it was a comfortable win um, arguably the most important thing and the most impressive thing was nilling Samoa because um, the conditions were horrendous and Scotland moved forward it's you know I'm not saying that it's coming out but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm much more encouraged by that performance than I was after Ireland I was going to ask you about your uh, your experience with Japan what, a, what an amazing place yeah, like I think the the things that I'll go back with are are things that kind of stand out. The they're excellent cures. Um, the you could stand on a street without any cars on it, but if the red Nick, man's Nick a, hates that. a red man's a red man, you <laughs> you ain't crossing the roads. Um, they're all incredibly gracious, incredibly warm, um, the nicest people, um, and so welcoming and. The place is buzzing. It's, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a, an incredible place. Tokyo was great. I've been able to see a bit of the country otherwise. Um, 
Kobe has been cool, something a bit different. The food's amazing. Yeah. We were just talking earlier after I caught you buffaloing in a restaurant. <laughs> um, like you go into unassuming little cafes or restaurants or bars, thinking that like you know you would never go into the equivalent if it was in the UK no or one Europe. With a plastic model of food. Outside. Exactly. Point to the picture. <laughs> um, and hope that something similar comes out. But there, it's incredible. And we've, you know, I sat in a restaurant the other night. That was a ramen restaurant, and it had they had one chef in the kitchen, who was cooking food probably no more than two feet away from me, for the twelve people that could fit in the restaurant. And I guarantee you, ninety nine percent of restaurants like that in the UK with the food standards would be closed down on the spot <laughs> but I didn't care it was incredible the food was incredible the hospitality is brilliant you go into places that there is not somebody in there that who is not Japanese and you get a few dodgy looks initially and then before you know it you're arm wrestling them drinking um, some sort of uh, spirit that has a the bottle has a, a snake in it um, they've got amazing plum wine. They've got they've got decent beer. They're awful drinkers themselves, uh, <laughs> but my God, they they have good fun doing it. Oh, well, thanks for thanks for spending a bit of time with us. And I promise you will not catch me buffaloing through a window again. I know. Well, I, I know there are, there are. Dinner, so <laughs> you, can't, you can't make promises you can't keep. Top man. So uh, you've not been caught buffaloing any oh, any time since. God. I, I mean, I was sat there. I went for a quiet meal on my own. I just thought I'm just starving. I've got to dive in. This place has been recommended for sushi. I thought I'll have a quick beer, and then this photo hit me on WhatsApp. Buffalo chin it, and I was just like, oh my god! Like, yeah, just it was on. Uh, it was on his. Yeah, it was on his Instagram as well. I think his story. I absolutely loved it. I was like, he's done you from a taxi. Yeah, but then he kept, he kept on filming me as I was drinking. He was like, Buffalo, Buffalo. I was like, piss off, mate! Like you're doing head in. I just want to have a quiet beer. <laughs> I think it's brilliant work from Mr. Lawson. So, uh, yeah, a hat tip to him, certainly. Um, so, uh, well, we, we certainly ran it all over that. So let's look at France, USA. 33-9 to France. Um, Raka, Fiku, Saram, Poirot on the score sheet. And your mate, uh, Johan Uge, starting things off. Yeah, he's such a good bloke. Um, look, I, I think the um, the French, I think that scoreline flatters them, doesn't it, really? Um, yeah, yeah, it really does. I, I was there and I think if, if the USA had maybe gone for the corner and a try instead of going for the third penalty, I mean, it's all hindsight. You, you, you would think that making it a three-point game with 15 minutes to go would be the right thing to do, but I wonder whether French heads uh, might have dropped. Um, certainly the French journalists weren't too impressed with the effort. Um, I managed to catch up with commentator Jan Chabana, uh, who, uh, well, his tone of voice says it all. Well, I think... Uh, uh, <laughs> the pause says it all. Difficult to say that. Uh, I, can't, I can't explain how the, um, how the French player began the, ma- the, the, the match. At, at the beginning, it was good, but after, after the first try... They totally lose the, the way they, they play. Uh, they want eight, to eight penalties to one at one stage. Yeah, because they, they were really really um, um, how do you say in English? Uh, they really uh, not scary but um, fragile. Yeah, fragile. Yep. Fragile in their in their mind, in their in their body. Because and, uh, and the referee also gave a couple of warnings to them. I mean, he gave them I think two final warnings. Yeah, but so so they, they were lucky not to lose someone to the bin. I think if you don't want to fight when you're on the pitch, you can't win. And I think that the French. Uh, believe it was it will, it will be it was so easy you know mm. against uh, United States and then you have to fight and in the scrum on the rocks you see the French very 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 uh, um, bad mm. I mean five tries 33 points to nine it's a decent end result not in this sense because at the end when the the, um, the les remplaçants you know the yeah. The, yeah, the, the replacements, the ex, yeah. the replacements uh, were on the pitch it was totally different it and was, they made yeah. difference so I was not scary about the the, 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 the issue you know, we know that the French team will win and I think but but it's a big big warning mm. you know and now for the coach I think it's more easy to say okay we have 15 players good and the others no, no good <laughs> big problem in defense big problem in the, the way they are preparing the game mm. after Argentina everybody said okay first half very good second half an accident no it was, it was not an accident okay. first half was an accident because Argentina were not good <laughs> In this, at this moment of the competition, we, we find the, 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 the French team that we, we found during the last Six Nations tournament and the last four years. That's the, the really, I think it's the, the real level of the French team. Okay. A lot of mistakes, a lot of, uh, they, they are 
they have no they can't be uh, sure about what they do on it's, the beach it's fair to say that uh, the hopes of the french have taken a little downturn tonight thank you jan for your time yeah, thanks so he's obviously not happy tom um i mean is that a performance where we just discount the french from really having much of a say in the rest of the sh- rest of the tournament uh, I think we write them off at their peril, at our peril actually, if you're English yeah. anyway, um, because I, I think they're capable of doing something. Um, I just think from their perspective, their, their mental strength is, is so weak in comparison to some of mm. the other teams. You know, the, the 40 minutes they put together first up against Argentina was, was outstanding and then they just unravelled mm. after half time. Uh, once Argentina had yeah. found a way to break them down. And then ever since then, they've just been sort of um, half the team that they were in the four, first 40 minutes. Um, they've got some yeah. great players, and there's no doubt about their individual talent. It's just their collective ability to gel that um, skill into into a, a collective 80-minute performance. Yeah. Bright, brighter signs of, uh, of a bit of action from the USA, though. Yeah, definitely, and I, you know, I think well, they couldn't have got any worse after that England performance, True. could they? I mean, that, that was pretty poor um, from anyone's perspective, I think, and, and certainly Gary Gold wasn't wasn't shy in, in stating that in his post match interview. So that, they'll have to, a lot to take from that game, um, but you know, I think um, I think the French would be pretty disappointed they didn't put them away sooner. Yeah. Yeah, well, it seems that, uh, that that was the reaction from a lot of the journalists. Um, New Zealand, Canada then followed that 63 points to nil. Um, they were rating ahead of a point a minute. And then I, was, I had to leave the, uh, the venue for USA, USA France. And then by the time I checked in with the score, they hadn't really added very much. No, I was watching that um, at an amazing bar in Kobe. Uh, with a couple of other guys, um, including Santiago Gomez Cora, who loves a barbecue, and we were at this bar and we were just cooking meat outside, watching watching the All Black Canada game, and they just stopped doing anything mm. um, after about 63 minutes, I think it was. They just basically nothing happened. Um, yeah. Ardi Surveyor came on with his goggles and then promptly took them off. Um, <laughs> yeah, appar- off hype. Apparently, I mean, given what we experienced in the Mizaki Stadium in Kobe in terms of humidity for England, uh, England, the USA and Scotland, yeah. Samoa. Apparently the, the humidity in Oita the other night for that Canada game was off the charts. And as soon as he oh, walked really? onto the pitch, he went all foggy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excellent. So those have worked for him really well. Um, yeah, I mean, it was always going to be a bit of a cricket score. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think probably the highlight was the hilarious moment Bowden Barrett ran the length of the field and dropped the ball. Dropped it? With no one anywhere near him? <laughs> like it's extraordinary, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it shows you how greasy his mitts were. Yeah. Do you, do you, you go with greasy or greasy? I noticed that oh. Joe Schmidt went greasy. Yeah, I, I've, I've enjoyed you doing it, but I would never say it myself. No. Um, Georgia, Fiji. Uh, Fiji winning 45 points to 10. Um, they really took them to the cleaners there, didn't they? Well, that's the Fiji we know, isn't it? Mm. Um, and they are now, I think, a threat to Wales. Because Rand- Randrandra was ridiculously good in horrific conditions in Osaka. Yeah. Um, some, of their, some of the players that we know are world class, i.e. their whole back line, were outstanding. Um, their back row is ridiculous. Kunitani was on the score sheet. Randrandra got two. Tuasova got one. They were all running them in. Um, yeah, and the old Godzilla, he he managed to get one over for for the Georgians, but I, they properly had it had it handed to them the other day um, by the Fijians. I think that will give them a real boost before they take on uh, Wales. I think that's next Wednesday, is it? Mm, TBC. Yes, I'll have to ch- have to look that one up. But yeah, uh, yeah that's it. Well, it, it'll uh, it'll have sent a little little ripple through the Welsh camp, I'm sure. Um, so uh, yeah what a game that is to look forward to uh, Ireland against Russia um, the Irish were struggling to really get the points scored I mean I know a team isn't going to roll over we sort of we sort of made that discussion in, in a previous pod but yeah. I mean it's, Italy had scored nearly 30 points against Russia inside about half an hour and the Irish were you pissed off re- a lot of Irish fans didn't you I did didn't I when I put that out on Twitter God, but the reaction told you how anxious they are that their team isn't performing yeah, look, I, I was commentating on that one again in Kobe. I feel like I've spent a lot of time in Kobe. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I was commentating on that one, and you just felt 
towards the end of that first half, the, the, the Irish were capable of running away for, away with it. Mm. Uh, the Russians got to the change rooms after 40 minutes in just about the nick of time, managed yeah. to get themselves sort of galvanised and back together. And actually the defensive performance in the second half was outstanding. Mm. Um, I thought Guy San at, at 10 had a brilliant game. He, he's normally um, understudy to the regular fly-off. Um, yeah. And I was chatting to... Lynn Jones after the game, um, which is always Your old good. Mate from London Welsh. Yeah, well, he he signed me for London Welsh, then buggered off. Um, <laughs> but he um, he was interesting to to chat to about about the Russians in, in that it's it's consistency that they lack, so they can put together good performances, um, but they then you know they they can't back that up. Um, yeah. But I think they've got progressively better through these first three games, and I think yeah, that have. that shows you what the exposure to to playing against the top teams does. Well, yeah, um, um, I, I had the good fortune to commentate on Italy, Russia in their warm-up games and actually speaking to Lynn, he said part of the problem is we're so remote in Russia and that, that you know, there aren't that many other teams for them to play. So, so they're just constantly running against themselves, which doesn't get give them the real tests that they need. So they were just delighted to have opposition. I, <laughs> I, I also caught up with uh, Chris Jenkins, who's their, their physio, and um, Vasily Artemiev, who used to be my teammate at... Uh, at Northampton, and he was—he's yeah. obviously been listening to our pods, which is great, and was 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 slightly um, confused as to why I was mentioning the um, the wrestling incidents. Um, <laughs> but but chatting to him, he, I mean, he's such a great bloke, and he, he honestly, his t- his post match interviews, they must go down as some of the best post match interviews we'll ever see in rugby. <laughs> I mean, that he he's so enthusiastic. He was he was beaming from from. From one side of his face to the other during the during the national anthems, it's so good to see someone that, that he he knows he's going to be on a losing team, but he cannot yeah. wait to to play in the game with his lovely Dublin accent as well. Which is, oh yeah, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Which as, is your accent? Well, that's yeah, not weird, quite. It's just horrible. Yeah. Um, We've covered that, I think. So let's have a little look ahead. As we're recording, South Africa Italy is about to be played. Um, So uh, we've sort of covered that a little bit. Um, uh, Did you have anything to say, sort of, about the importance of uh, of Stain, Pelledri, and Pariso? No, I I just think they have a big role to play in trying to stop this South African machine. Um, I think, from their point of view, they're they're pretty much done and dusted, aren't they? They've got two horrendous games to back up this pull with. um, but that, but they can make some dents in in, in those two teams, I'm sure, and they'll be that's what be, they'll be looking to try and do. Um, that's, yeah. That'll be the first game that's being beamed to space. I think that's quite cool. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so there's an Italian on the space station. I mean, do you not oh. follow? Do you not follow these things, man? Uh, I saw that there'd been a good luck from the space station, but I didn't well, know. That, that's your man. Been... So he's an Italian astronaut, and he wanted it up there. So World Rugby, they just made that shit happen. <laughs> Well, that is very impressive. They are incredibly powerful. Um, Australia, Uruguay. Then uh, that match is uh, well kicking off the weekend's action. That is a two fifteen game our time, six fifteen in the morning UK, uh, taking place in Oita. Nineteen year old Jordan Pattaya to start on the wing, um, and uh, well, youngest Australian ever at Rugby World Cup um, since Beric Barnes. Um, what else have you got to say about this one? He was outstanding in the under twenties. I did a couple of years ago in uh, in France. Uh, I always thought that he he would be quickly fast tracked into the team, and he's been injured for a long time. And I think they they sort of seen this game as the one that he's going to come back into. So it'll be interesting to see whether he gets a shot um, later on in the tournament as well. Should they progress? So yeah. um, I th- you know they they're giving a few other players a go, aren't they? Um, they've changed the halfbacks again. Um, not I don't think Foley had the flashes of games last time around. So. Lelia mm. Fano and Nick White are straight back in. They can they can raise the pace of the game. Um, it's an Australian win all over it. Yeah, yeah, certainly is. Uh, then the big one, as far as Eddie Jones's men is concerned, uh, are concerned, is men. Yes, anyway, uh, it is five o'clock our time in Japan. It's a nine a.m. one in the Tokyo Stadium. If you're watching back home, uh, Nicolas Sanchez left out of the squad. Um, which That's you mad. That I can't get my head around that. Says a fair bit about his form. But yeah, and the old veteran. Benjamin Erda Pigietta, um, who, uh, as you've noted here, uh, 12 caps in 12 years. That's absurd. It is absurd. He's played brilliantly in the top 14, mind you. Um, he's, he's got a very much more structured game. Um, mm. A nice left foot off, off, out of hand and off the floor. Um, so, you know, they'll be looking to, to um, get stuck into the England. I don't think they've got enough to win. Um, I think the interesting, interesting selection for me is, look, Sanchez out of form. 
Augustine Cravey though he's on the bench he leads from the front all the time yeah. for the Pumas doesn't he so yeah, the fact yeah. that he's on the bench um, Julian Montoya yeah, scored three against Tonga and I think did he not score against the French as well in that second half I think he might have so I think he mm. might be like the Argentinian top scorer so they've got to get him in yeah and okay. then obviously um, Geronimo goes again Geronimo de la Fuente well he's got the best name on the planet yeah <laughs> certainly and uh, and England fans will be pleased to see the, the likes of Jack Nolan Maka Vinopola on the bench um, and uh, yeah is this Eddie's strongest side to date definitely is um, great to see Mako Vinopola and Jack Nob back involved I was getting slightly twitchy about the fact that we hadn't seen them and then seeing them uh, strategic sort of posts from England rugby showing them training just to make sure that yeah. everyone knew they were still in Japan um, yeah. you know I, I think um, we haven't seen a huge amount of Slade either, either have we over the past few weeks good to see him on the bench uh, yeah. but that Eddie Jones sticking with that axis Ford Farrell um, Manu to Alangi I mean he's going to be chomping at the bit again I cannot wait for this game to, yeah, this, to get this, going this, this could be a game where he really comes alive couldn't it yeah I just I just think we'll learn a lot now about you know people are saying oh, well England not doing this England not doing that they're making a lot of mistakes well now now they can't make as many mistakes because they're coming up against two well-drilled teams um, that probably don't have the quality that they have, but they're a big threat to them um, in the last two games of this pool stage. Yeah, yeah. So that one, five o'clock local time and a nine a.m. one back in the UK. Uh, then we have Japan Samoa, um, can't which wait. is a, a seven thirty evening game here, eleven thirty UK. Uh, that one in Toyota City. Michael Leach is back in, but Lapis Labas Gagne stays as captain. Um, at Sushi Sakate makes his tournament debut with uh, well Shota Horie, uh, who is uh, a bit of a star man hooker. He's going to be on the bench. Um, two changes to the side that beat Ireland. Um, for uh, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating one for Samoa. Well, alongside Geronimo de la Fuente, definitely Wimpy da- van der Volt, <laughs> Wimpy van der Volt, and Lapis Labash Gagni definitely yeah. come one or t- one, two, and three for the top names in the in the tournament. Um, yeah. Samoa. They... I'm wondering how Labash Gagni would work in a Geordie accent, but it's quite a challenge. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lapis. Labush Gagne. No, what? Yeah. Where was that yeah. from? That that was a, that that was the outskirts of Glasgow, I think. Lappies, Lappies, Labush Gagne. It's definitely going to be Lappies. Yeah, it sounds like I'm off to the strippers. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Not that I've ever it. been. I've only been once, and that was in Argentina. I got locked in, and we couldn't get out. I actually got terrified. Never been back since. Oh. It's another story. <laughs> anyway, um, I th- I'm really looking forward to seeing the um, seeing the Japanese go against uh, Samoa in Toyota. Well, not only is it a mental stadium, I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, but I can't wait to, to just be in a stadium where all of those Japanese fans are. I think it's going to be yeah. outstanding. I think they've I got... mean, is this the potential banana skin for the Japanese? Yeah, because, because they've done the big one, haven't they? they they've, they've toppled Ireland, and now, now they'll be absolutely buzzing. But if you think any other team could be, could be more humble, you, you, you probably couldn't find one in this World Cup. Yeah. Um, so that that um, certainly plays to their advantage. I, I think they'll be well drilled. I think they'll play at pace again. I'm just not sure uh, Samoa will have anything like the fitness to be able to cope with them. Yeah. Well, I think that is certainly going to be the key. Even if Samoa, you know, bring the physical challenge and, and, and might knock a couple of the Japanese off, they are just going to run rings around them. And, and as we saw in the Scotland game, you've just got to hang in there with them until until they they fade away. Haven't you? Um, we then have uh, New Zealand, Namibia. That's just going to be one-way traffic. They will be waving in the tries there. Point, I watched point that game. a minute again. Yeah, I watched that game in uh, in the Olympic Stadium in 2015, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was just a procession. Uh, and then uh, a little look at France against Tonga. Uh, that one is a 4:45 game, 8:45 in the morning UK in Kumamoto. Kumamoto, uh, <laughs> down in the south of Japan. It's really satisfying that one. Uh, France making 11 changes. Um, <laughs> I like you've, you've written on our notes here, do they know why? Which is wonderful. <laughs> We'd have to send a little email to Jacques Brunel. Mate, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> you got any idea why you made those changes, Chief? Yeah. Just fancy to see us in, in different fact, ropes. I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, the different <laughs> halfback pairing of the Rugby World Cup. Um, Baptiste Saran getting the score against the USA. Camille Chat, Gabriel Guiton, and Raka are the only four retained. Uh, You're France disappointed. Second. Dupont's not playing because you won't see him in the buff in the, on the online again. 
on TV. That was unbelievable. What is uh, he doing do you know what? Stardust I actually while the rest of his team are about to run out? I actually found, uh, I found a screenshot of that, so I've forgotten to WhatsApp it for you. It's all right. I've got the video, mate. It's oh, fine. my, you're so... I bet, I bet you had that on the Onsen. <laughs> oh, that's it's, for a different uh, it's podcast. It's frowned upon, I think, arousal in the Onsen. Um, <laughs> France, is, France is second in Pool C. Um, so uh, so they will fancy their chances. Um, but, of course, we know that if England win on Saturday, uh, that they will qualify. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think England are looking pretty strong, aren't they, in that, in that, uh, in that pool, given the other performances from those two teams. Mm. It'll be really interesting to see what order all these teams start to finish in now. Um, we'll get into that point where we've, we, we, we've got through some of the fixtures that, that probably um, we know who's going to win, and now these get really interesting no matter who's playing because actually you start to find out who finishes where. Yeah, it's getting tasty. Uh, super. Tasty. Um, uh, any other business? Uh, not from my end, mate. No. Um, I'm going to finish. I'm, I'm now three quarters of away through my first pint of Asahi up in Sh- Shinjuku. Shinjuku, yeah. Um, it's a nice little part of town, that, um, from what I can remember last night, anyway. Um, so, uh, well, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, enjoy the games that you're going to take in. Um, and uh, to all those listening, enjoy whatever you are going to be watching over the course of this weekend. Some more cracking games. Uh, probably the pick of the bunch is that England Argentina clash. But of course, as Tom mentions, really should keep an eye on that Japan Samoa one as well, because that is certain to be a stormer. Um, at the rugby report underscore is who we are on Twitter. It'd be great to hear from you uh, with any observations that you have, whether you're here in Japan or whether you are watching back home. Uh, and, uh, and keep the review coming on iTunes it's, uh, it's great to hear what you guys think of our ramblings um, that is about it from me so uh, thank you very much Tom super uh, smashing we'll grid <laughs> the rugby report Japan 2019 is sponsored by Betfred we're almost into the home stretch of games in Japan but myself Tom and Betfred are still buzzing around the tournament the on-field action's been superb to watch and the hospitality of the Japanese is really second to none don't forget to check Betfred for all of your try scorer bets and of course their double delight on selected matches including England against Argentina check the app for all double delight games and whenever you bet Betfred 18s and over be gambleaware.org full T's and C's apply see betfred.com for more information when the fun stops stop this has been a rugby media production